You are listening to the EPT Works Listen, Love, Give podcast. Hi, I'm Dr. Annette Cargioli, the Forgiveness Doctor. I'm here to help you create phenomenal health, happiness, and new life with energy, intuition, and forgiveness. In a world where emotional health is often treated with mind-altering drugs or years of talk therapy, it's time for more compassionate, imaginative initiatives in emotional health care. EPT is short for Emotional Polarity Technique, an innovative holistic emotional therapy that will change your life and health for good. You can learn more about Emotional Polarity Technique through my new book, The Forgiveness Doctor, available on Amazon.com. You can subscribe to this podcast, get free EPT training at EPTWorks.com, and like us on Facebook. Hi, everyone. Hopefully, you are already feeling much more confident with Step 4, Forgiveness in the EPT Healing Strategy. Step four can be challenging for many people because it requires a faith in jumping into the flow that is already there for you and your client. This four-part podcast series is designed to help you to really get good at creating forgiveness statements that have the greatest impact on igniting new life in your clients. Even if you feel pretty good about your ability to make those forgiveness statements and affirmation, I'm pretty certain this four-part series will still kick your statements up a notch. If you are still insecure about applying this aspect of EPT, I encourage you to listen to this series more than once. I guarantee it will sink in and you will find yourself more confident with making statements than ever before. It's all about getting in the flow of forgiveness, which happens to be the title of this episode, Getting in the Flow of Creative Forgiveness. I know you can become a genius with forgiveness statements, just like the EPT practitioners who seem to easily flow the most profound forgiveness statement. And let's admit it here. Sometimes it can be quite intimidating to try your hand at this new flow of forgiveness when there is someone who is already really good at it or quite comfortable with it. Rest assured that no matter how advanced another practitioner seems to you, they also took the same journey you are taking to get good at forgiveness statements. I want you to just let go of the fear and intimidation, relax, and let this information sink into your mind. It's just a new way of thinking. Let your mind take it in. In this episode, I'm going to review all the types of statements I have already talked about that are most frequently used in step four of EPT Healing Strategy. I'm also including a couple I haven't mentioned, and I'm adding one more powerful statement that comes in the form of a prayer. Now, there are only three basic types of statements that are used in Step 4, Forgiveness, in the EPT 4-Step Healing Strategy. As you grow as an EPT practitioner, you will learn more advanced types of statements. However, they really all stem from the three basic types of statements. By getting these three basic types of healing statements down, you become ready to incorporate more advanced healing statements with ease. These basic types of statements are the ones you will most commonly hear and use in an EPT session. They are, first and foremost, forgiveness statements. Those are the statements that begin, I forgive myself for believing, I forgive another person for hurting me, I give another person permission to forgive me for blaming them for this mess my life is in right now or the hurt that I have. And a branch off of forgiveness statements are acceptance statements. So 
still in the category of forgiveness statements are acceptance statements. And that's one we haven't talked about, but I'm going to cover it right here. Acceptance statements are often used after forgiveness statements to decrease resistance to the changes happening with forgiveness. Acceptance statements help to soothe the soul that is in transformation. Acceptance statements sound like this. I increase my level of acceptance to blah, 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 all the bad things that have happened that I can't control. I accept my mom was hurtful to me. I accept I can't change my husband. I accept I can't change the past. I increase my level of acceptance to the love that people have for me. Another branch off of forgiveness statements are what I like to call even though statements. Even though statements sort of blend acceptance and forgiveness together. Even though statements sound like this. Even though my mom abused me, I deeply love and accept myself and I forgive her. Even though it was hard being hurt by my mom, I deeply love and accept myself and I forgive myself and her. Even though I thought my life would always be ruined by the abuse of my childhood, I was wrong and now I deeply love and accept myself. I forgive those who hurt me and I forgive myself. So in the list of statements that I like to call forgiveness statements, the ones you will hear are, I forgive the straight up forgiveness statements, which are, I forgive myself. I forgive the other person. I give the other person permission to forgive me. And then a br- two branches off forgiveness statements are the acceptance statements, which is I increase my level of acceptance to what happened to me in my life that I couldn't control. I increase my level of acceptance. And, and just like forgiveness statements, you get very specific. I increase my level of acceptance that my mom may never change and love me. I increase my level of acceptance that this marriage may never get better. So um, I'm giving you these because you'll hear advanced practitioners use these statements. And really, they're just a form of the forgiveness statement. Um, for, and accept, acceptance statements really allow you to keep moving the energy forward that you start, that you're moving with the forgiveness statement. When you start to change somebody's internal paradigm, they can sometimes kind of panic or freeze because you're opening up possibilities that even though they said they wanted, when, when that becomes a reality that I really could make a new decision in my life, it can be kind of terrifying. That's one reason we hold those um, fear release points on the chest. I found out early on that I would have people freezing in the statements. I would sit in front of them and just have them say statements after me. When I, and I found that when I could hold those fear release points as they said the statements, then it would keep them in their body. It would keep them from going to that point of fear and terror that comes up because we have just changed the status quo in their mind. And possibilities now are endless that they never even imagined. And that can be terrifying for a mental state. So holding those fear release points managed to allow me to to move into greater and greater new life possibilities for this person through forgiveness. So another branch off forgiveness, again, is uh, are the even though statements. And those are even though my mom abused me. I deeply love and accept myself and I forgive her. Even though I thought I would never heal from the broken heart of my first love, I am now free to have a better marriage with someone that's so much better than I ever imagined. That's how the even those statements go. They're just another form of a forgiveness statement starting with even though, and you basically accept what is, so it's a combination of uh, acceptance 
and forgiveness. So under the forgiveness statements, I'll repeat it one more time for you. You have the straight up forgiveness statements. I forgive myself for believing the lie. I forgive the person who hurt me. I give the person who hurt me permission to forgive me for blaming them for the mess that I now have in my life. And then acceptance statements. I increase my level of acceptance to what is. I accept what is. I accept forgiveness. I accept that everything isn't going to be something I can control. And then even though all of this crap happened in my life, I still deeply love and accept myself, and I'm going to forgive the people who hurt me. Even though I thought I could never be happy, I'm now free to be happy. So those are the even though statements. Second, fill in the empty space, or you can call it the write a new story statements. Those statements sound like this. I give myself permission to feel good when a good thing happens. I choose to be happy even though my dad was abusive. Without this pattern, I am free to do what? I am free to feel what? I am free to create something new. I am free to forgive the people who hurt me. So the second category, the first category are forgiveness statements. And they are the forgiveness statements the acceptance statements, and the even though statements. Number two are the fill in the empty space or also known as the write a new story statements. And those sound like I give myself permission to feel happy even though I was hurt by my family, even though I screwed up in life and hurt somebody I loved. I choose to have a good life even though I felt ashamed with how my dad treated me as a child. Without this pattern or without all this anger and hurt and shame and humiliation of my past, I am free to have a life that is more joyful, more creative, and more prosperous than I ever imagined possible. Number three are the simple releasing statements. And those sound like this. I say yes to this pain and trauma, and I call it up and release it to divine love and gratitude. I say yes to this shame, and I call it up and release it from my body, mind, and spirit. I say yes to this anger and grief, and I call it up and release it to God's love and mercy. So those are the simple releasing statements. So let's talk about these three categories just in review one more time. There's really only three categories of statements uh, until, you know, that are basic and everything else pretty much, even the advanced, will branch off of this. So the first one are straight up forgiveness statements. I forgive myself for what I believed that isn't true. I forgive the person who hurt me and I give the person who hurt me permission to forgive me for blaming them for what I'm now going through that doesn't feel very good in my life. And also in the forgiveness category are the statements of acceptance or the acceptance statements, which are I increase my level of acceptance to the resistance I feel with the anger and shame my dad laid on me when he abused me. I increase my level of acceptance to the failure that exists in my marriage right now and the abusiveness of my husband. I increase my level of acceptance to the pain I caused in my children because of the patterns I carried from my own abusive relationship with my mother. I accept I'm not a perfect mother, but nobody is. I accept that my mother hurt me and I can still forgive her. And then another branch of forgiveness statements are the even though statements. Even though I had a difficult childhood, I am now free to be at peace with my mother and to forgive her. Even though I'm not perfect, I still deserve a great marriage and a man who loves me. And then the second category of statements are the fill in the empty space. That's the empty space that was left when you released all that pain with those forgiveness statements. 
or you can also call it the write a new story statements. This is where you write a new story with positive affirmations. And those statements sound like this. I give myself permission to feel good when a good thing happens. I choose to be happy even though my dad was abusive. Without this pain or this pattern, what am I free to do? I am free to have great relationships. I am free to receive love from people who are caring and loving and safe. I am free to enjoy life more than I've ever enjoyed it, and I'm free to love myself. And then the third category, one more time, are simple releasing statements, and they sound like this. I say yes to this pain and trauma, and I call it up and release it to divine love and gratitude. I say yes to this shame, and I call it up and release it from my body, mind, and spirit. I say yes to this anger and grief at age three when my dad was beating up my mom, and I call it up and I release it to God's love and mercy. Now, the prayer I promise to give you is known as the Ho'oponopono prayer. This is the same prayer we often use at the end of a family constellation, which is level three of core training. It is simply, I love you, God. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and thank you. This prayer can be used in EPT within step four forgiveness in the following way. I don't have a problem with anger with my boss. I have a problem with old memories and I pray over those memories. I love you, God. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and thank you. So when I'm working with someone and it seems like I haven't quite moved it or I need to move it just a little further, this energy that I want to sense that peace within this old memory that we're rewriting and reprogramming. And I will have, I'll have the person, you know, follow after me. And they may say, I don't have a problem with an abusive mother. I have a problem with old memories and I pray over those memories. I love you, God. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and thank you. And that's how you use that Pono prayer. And again, you may hear advanced practitioners throwing that into their forgiveness statements, which sometimes throws you off or intimidates you and makes you feel like, oh my, I don't know where to go. Well, I'm breaking this down in this episode as clear as possible. You know, as I said, there's really only three categories of statements and anything advanced really kind of just falls off of those three categories as I've covered and reviewed already in this podcast. So as you do the four-step healing strategy of EPT, focus, find it, fix it, and forgive it, you want to think of yourself First, identifying what is in the space that needs love and forgiveness. The space being this person's mind, their life, their memories. What is in there that needs love and forgiveness? Secondly, you want to clear the space by loving and accepting what is through forgiveness, compassion, and love. And then finally, you write a new story, a more life-affirming story, a story where love wins with positive affirmations. This is the flow of creative forgiveness in the EPT step, four-step healing strategy. Next, I want to include the flow of forgiveness in an actual EPT session that I did with one of my clients. Her focus was grief and anxiety that was keeping her from going after what she wanted. Her memory statement was, I feel grief and anxiety at age four because my mom is so upset. And then she added, I have to have grief and anxiety when mom is upset or she gets worse. 
if I'm happy, if I don't respond to her grief and anxiety by also having grief and anxiety, she just gets worse and I can't handle it. So that was the the focus that we were looking at and the memory statement. So here are some of those statements that I'm going to walk through and you can kind of listen and notice how I've incorporated everything I've already told you in these four podcasts is represented here somewhere. So I forgive myself for believing that letting go of the grief and upset that calmed my mom would be very bad for me. So the grief and upset she was having at age four was because to be anything but upset when mom was upset would make mother more upset. So she didn't want to let go of the grief and upset because it calmed her mom. I'm just kind of clarifying what this means. So to continue, I forgive myself for believing I can't handle the grief and upset of my mom or anyone I am with. I forgive myself for believing the grief and upset of others is too hard for me and it makes me feel like a powerless four-year-old. I forgive myself for believing the grief and upset of others is too penetrating for my soul and I have to prevent it or stop it by carrying grief and anxiety and upset in my own self. I forgive myself for believing my only power to resolve the pain I feel from others, grief and upset, is to be full of upset and anxiety and grief myself. I forgive myself for believing my anxiety and grief is the only power to stop what I can't handle in others' reactions about me. I increase my level of acceptance to the grief and anxiety my mom had when I disappointed her. I increase my level of acceptance to the grief and anxiety my mom had when I wasn't good enough for her. I increase my level of acceptance to the grief and anxiety my mother had when I was fulfilled and happy. I increase my level of acceptance to the grief and anxiety my mom had when I was whole and happy. I increase my level of acceptance to the grief and anxiety my mom had when I was motivated and confident. I increase my level of acceptance to the grief and anxiety my mom had when I was efficient and confident. I increase my level of acceptance to the grief and anxiety my mom had. Now, a little side note here, I'm, I spent a lot of statements there increasing her level of acceptance because her trigger that was causing her to have grief and anxiety and not being able to achieve what she wanted to achieve was her sensitivity to her mother's upset and her sensitivity to her mother's grief and anxiety was too hard for her as a four-year-old. So what I I did the forgiveness and then I started pushing. I increased my level of acceptance to my mother's grief and anxiety because that's what she was reacting to. Okay, to continue, I accept my mom is not going to leave me and never come back. The fear at age four was if mom is upset, she might leave and never come back. I accept she is not going to kill me. That was another fear. If mom is sufficiently upset, she might do me in. I accept she is not going to stop others from loving me. I accept she has a problem with grief and anxiety and overreaction to what she doesn't like. I accept her overreaction won't ruin my life. I accept her overreaction and manipulation. Without this pattern, I am free to stop carrying grief and anxiety in my life as a source of power when I'm afraid I'm not perfect or I'm unworthy. Without this pattern, I am free to let go of the grief and anxiety even if my mom goes nuts or won't stop being upset. 
Without this pattern, I am free to know I can handle the grief and anxiety of people I care about, even if I caused it or not. Without this pattern, I am free to stop trying to change or avoid the upset others may have with me by being full of grief and anxiety myself. Without this pattern, I am free to stop using grief and anxiety to prevent the feelings of abandonment and insecurity from age four when mom wouldn't let it go until I was upset too. I say yes to the feelings of insecurity and abandonment that I'm afraid I can't handle. And I call them up and release them to divine love and gratitude. I forgive myself for believing I have to feel insecure and abandonment when another person is upset or full of grief that I'm not perfect. I forgive myself for believing I have to feel insecurity and abandonment when any person I know is disappointed in me or anything. I forgive myself for believing I have to feel like an insecure four-year-old who is afraid of abandonment anytime any person I know or don't know is disappointed in me or anything. I forgive myself for believing I was insecure and at risk for abandonment whenever my mom was full of grief and anxiety. I forgive myself for believing I have to continually react to the grief and anxiety and my fear of abandonment by holding grief and anxiety first. Even though my mom's grief and anxiety made me feel insecure and fear abandonment, she wasn't ever going to leave me. Even though I never felt the grief and anxiety she wanted me to feel, even if I never felt the grief and anxiety she wanted me to feel, she wasn't going to leave me. I was safe and secure in that relationship. I was always safe and secure in that relationship. Without this pattern, I am free to stop feeling insecure, and fear of abandonment every time someone else is disappointed or let down in their life. Without this pattern, I am free to let go of the four-year-old feelings of insecurity and fear of abandonment that arose out of my mom's grief and anxiety with my actions. I say yes to these feelings of insecurity and fear of abandonment. And I call them up and I release them to divine love and gratitude. Without this pattern, I am no longer hypersensitive to the grief and anxiety of others. Without this pattern, people I care about can feel grief and anxiety without me getting all insecure and fearing abandonment and coping by getting upset like they are. Without this pattern, I am free to accept I never had to get upset to change my mom. I never had to change my mom at all. I was always free to love her the way she is with all her crazy, annoying manipulations. I choose to open my heart now to love my mom the way she is or was with all her crazy, annoying abuse and manipulations. With Without this oversensitivity to mom's grief, anxiety reaction, I am free to feel safer in this relationship and other relationships than I've ever felt. I am safe. Without this oversensitivity to mom's grief and anxiety reaction, I'm not afraid to be abandoned. Without this oversensitivity to mom's grief anxiety reaction, I'm not afraid to be me. Without this oversensitivity to mom's grief anxiety reaction, I'm not afraid to go after what I want. I give myself permission to accept I don't have a problem 
with fear, grief, and going after what I want. I have a problem with old memories, and I pray over those memories. I love you, God. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, and thank you. (sighs) Let the flow of forgiveness inspire you to help more and more people with EPT. It's time. It's time now for more imaginative initiatives in emotional health care, and EPT is one of them. May you feel the freedom of forgiveness in your own life and health. May you be covered in God's love and protection as more and more people seek you out as their life-changing alternative for their own healing. May you find greater joy in sharing this new healing initiative in emotional health care than you ever knew possible. Thanks for listening. You can learn more about emotional polarity technique through my book, The Forgiveness Doctor, available at Amazon.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like us on Facebook, and go get your free EPT training at EPTWorks.com. I'm Dr. Annette Cargioli, The Forgiveness Doctor, sharing with you a more imaginative initiative in emotional health care. Until next time, listen, love, give. EPT works.